this is a little render of my code working. All it does is get the uh, the right rotation to drive this motion. Everything else, like the rendering and stuff, is all in Blender. And the goal of this project was to approximate the inverse kinematics of a bar linkage with an unknown behavior of distance with respect to drive rotation. Uh, and it has some limits, which is it has to be one degree of freedom, it has to be an onto function, which I'll explain later. Um, I decided to do this project because I often need to find a certain endpoint of a complex bar linkages, which is just what IK is, but Blender's IK is a general system, which I don't really understand how it works, but it doesn't support loops. So if you see like mine, or this particular setup here has two loops in it, which is, I just made them IK, cause that's easier and to show that. So you see, if I try to put IK onto this, it doesn't work. Like it just ignores all these. So the actual object is down there. So I'll just delete it or undo. So I, I need to get this to work. So I'm not gonna actually like calculate uh, the specific geometry to make this work. I've done that before, but it takes a lot of time and it only works for one specific thing. And I can't make code that just does the geometry and algebra for me. So instead I'm just gonna approximate it <clears throat> by like recording a bunch of data and then taking the inverse of that later and like blending between all the points. So it, so it has two scripts, one script to write to a file and then put some functions on the bones basically. And then the actual functions are gonna be in a different script. I'm just gonna use Blender's BPY extension for Python so I can just uh, affect the bones and read them directly. So the writing process. So the first uh, script is going to, sorry. So the first script just uses a blender operator, which is an object that just brings up a text box and I can input things here. I have like min, max, and increments, stuff like that. Uh, so it brings that up and then it makes sure that I have the base bone, the drive bone, the end bone, and a target bone selected here in no order. That's what this does. And then it will loop through, it will make the, let me bring it up bigger. It will loop through rotations of the drive bone. It'll set it to the minimum amount you specify and just loop by increments of the max amount until you get to the end amount, which for me is 75. You see it goes over, but it just ignores that for mine. Because if, if it's not on to, it will just stop at the uh, longest or first shortest point. So after, for every time it's looping through these, it is going to measure two things, which are the distance of this point to this point, which is base bone to the end bone here, and also the angle, uh, or this, this angle, sorry. And then it stores those into a CSV, which I will oh, I have open already, which is right here. The first uh, row here is just the minimum amount you specify, and then the increment amount, and then uh, the amount is not specified because of the length or the amount of iterations is not specified, then the maximum amount is not specified because it's that length times the increment. Then here we have all the distances and here we have all the angles. After writing to the file, it then applies drivers to the bones. So here, I'm not gonna go over the code. And then, oh, here's important is you can, how a driver works is it's an object that lets you like put an expression onto a bone, right? So you see, this is like the actual um, data of the bone, like this is the axis. And if I add a driver, I can like, I can put a little expression there and I can add different variables here. So here's my expression. The expression is just a specified function. And then in Python, you can just put a Python function in if you specify a namespace in that file, which is, this file I'll explain that later but an important thing to note is I could not pass I could not pass just the file name if you see here here is I, I duplicated it so I have two working instances which is uh, I was testing that uh, if I open the driver uh, I had to put oh sorry wrong phone what if I open the if I open the driver editor you see I have I don't know test if I change that in here, it's totally fine. But if I update it in the viewport, like if I, I go here, you know, if I were to open this, right, and type, uh, get rid of the, I don't know, it's fine. I close it, it's fine. I check here, hit enter, it's now been updated. Blender, for some reason, auto-corrects, open, uh, open quotation, slash, slash, 
to a seek slash slash. It might have something to do with trigonometry, I don't know. I could not find anything on the internet. I'd even ask people online. No one knew why that was happening. It might be a bug, but just as a workaround, I put I don't know in between. And then when it's a use later, it just takes it out. And then this is to register the operator, that's, that's unimportant. So the reading part, how that works is it creates, I have a dictionary of objects and each of those objects just at the start of the program it reads through the text file and creates like two tuples of the big lists and it also stores like the other variables and it has a blended uh, index. Okay, so that's like if I have distances one, two, three, four, five with indexes, indices, one, two, three, four, five, for this example. Uh, if I put in a distance of 4.5, it's going to return an index of 4.5. So it just it just blends between the two linearly. So, which is why I need a higher resolution of data. But so yeah, that was this slide. Um, that's just how it works. But then, so how it actually works is the Blender functions the the. Uh, the drivers just have the functions in them directly. So these have to be called every frame and they have to be reset every frame. So that means I can't just assign these uh, objects in the dictionary to the bones, which is why I added them to the dictionary because every frame, both bones have to search through the dictionary to look for the object. So they call this, uh, sorry, these functions. So they call this uh, IKProx data function, which just searches through the dictionary. If it doesn't exist, it creates it. If it exists, it uses that. It has to do that weird I don't know thing. But then the actual function uh, is just a, oh, sorry. Yeah, the actual function is just pretty basic. It is, um, functionally, they're both exactly the same and they just search through a list, right? So I, I pass the, uh, or I, I look through the distances, right? Like I have a distance that's like maybe between 20 and 21. And then for both other lists, I get that point in between 20 and 21. I just don't have a drive rotation list, which would be here, because um, every item in that list would just be the index multiplied by this increment minus this value. So I just do that math directly right here because it's actually shorter than the, the other one, which is uh, this. Is it? Yeah. Which it just, I think I explained it in the, the write-up. It, it, yeah, it like blends between them in reverse. Another thing to mention is uh, if it finds none, that's fine. I just put it in one of them at random. Okay, this this message, error message that says, because uh, for the first frame of the scene, it, it, it will load these objects, it'll create these objects. So for the first frame, there won't be a, uh, there won't be a, a, one of these objects. So I have this error message here, but only in one of them because it doesn't crash if there's none that exists. So it just gives you that little message, but only in the one. But now I will test my code. So this one works already, but if I, I delete the file, okay, I'm gonna close the file. I'm gonna delete the file, All right? Uh-oh, All right, and then I select base, drive, end, and target. And I'm gonna now run the code. I just set up the default values to be exactly what I needed for this setup specifically. And now it works, okay? So the, the distance here and it's, it's um, yeah, it's getting the right distance and then rotating this in reverse. And I just use Blender's track to work. And you can see it's pretty good. If I, I should move the, I move the target around the target. Let's just put it right on the ring and it follows. Uh, it does follow perfectly. I just reset, I just moved the target around poorly. Yeah, that's better but yeah you can look at the render i did right before it it works it works fine i think it works pretty good and i can even rotate this bone and it rotates around 